Gig Gab, the show for working musicians, episode 288 for Monday, January 18th, 2021. Folks, and welcome to Gig Gab, or welcome back to Gig Gab, the show by, for, and about working musicians here in Durham, New Hampshire. As usual, I'm Dave Hamilton. Here in Napomo, California, it's Paul Kent. Paul, for the first time uh, today, I believe in several hours, I will be inviting people into my studio that don't live with me. So that's... How do you feel about that? Um, I, you know, there's a little apprehension about it. Um I, and we've all we all submitted our tests this morning, and uh, at least two of us, uh, m- me and Russ, have gotten our results back. I haven't heard from Mike, but we literally all submitted them in the same spot. So I would imagine that Mike um, Mike's will be processed in time, and hopefully he's also negative as as Russ and I were and or are. And so uh, so yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to it. It you know it'll be it'll be interesting. There's there's we've been in very close contact, right. And sharing all kinds of things, uh, you know, uh, uh, the things about our interactions or the lack of interactions we've been having, which it turns out to be, which is good. And then also just our, our, you know, what we want to like do and play and, and there's all kinds of apprehension. I mean, it, you know, I've, I I realize I'm, well, I know I'm fortunate that I've had opportunities to play, throughout this, those guys have not. And so there's a lot of like, gosh, I don't know, you know, if we should try that song, I'm going to be rusty. And it was like, wait, 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 whoa. Like this is for the three of us. No one else needs to know what goes on in this room. (laughs) You know, this is for the three of us to get together, hang out. And it just so happens we're going to have instruments like that's, you know, that's it. So, um, you know what? I I, I get that, but I also get the apprehensive because totally. Oh yeah. Kind of like, you're kind of like projecting a little bit like, where am I right now? You know, yeah. if, if this was a rehearsal for something, how naked am I? Or yeah. I how judge. bad, how bad is this going to be? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and yeah. I, you know, I totally get it. I mean, we're coming up March 7th will be one year since the house rockers played a gig a year. Mm. Yeah. Man. And you know, we're kind of projecting out and it's going to be at least six or seven more months, 18 months. Yeah. Between gigs. I mean, it's we're starting all over again. I mean, in a sense, I, you know, that's gonna, true. Yeah, that's right. I yeah. mean, we're going to have to see, you know, what songs click, what ended up in muscle memory, what, how long is it going to take us to get a, you know, a show together? How much rehearsal time will it take to get to the level we expect for ourselves? And it all starts with that first time together. That's I mean, it. Our rhythms, yeah. our rhythm section got together, you know, a couple months ago. I was telling you about that. And it was nice and it was interesting what muscle memory, but I'm, I'm fairly convinced, you know, add another six, eight months to that and, you know, stuff, stuff's going to fall off. Right. Right. Oh, stuff. Yeah. Well, and, and things are going to change too, right? Like I've been playing different things than I would normally be playing, you know, in a, with, if we weren't in the middle of a pandemic and a lockdown and all that stuff. And the same is true of those guys. Like Mike, I know our uh, one of our guitar players has been playing mostly acoustic guitar. I think the same is true of Russ. And so they were both like, oh, this will be interesting to, you know, see if we can get a blend going together. I think they're, they're, they're each bringing a bass tonight too. So, you know, we can kind of just hack around and mess around. In the early days of Fling, there was no bass player. Uh, Mike played bass most of the time. Russ played bass on a few songs. But, um, but so this will be a little bit back to our roots and and all that, but really it's just three guys getting together and, you know, enjoying one another's company and happening to have instant instruments around. Right. So that that's, but, but I totally get the apprehension. I mean, it, there is that, I mean, I was going to say there's, there's a level of performance involved. There's literally a performance involved, like, right. Right. We're going to be playing on our instruments. I've, I've gone through that even, uh, you know, not, I'm not so much worried about it tonight, but. I have gone through that with, you know, some of these things that I've done where it's like, oh, I've got to learn some tunes and I've got to show up I, that, you know, that bitter pill gig. That was the first time I'd played with bitter pill when we played those gigs in September. 
Yeah. It's the first time I'd played with them in, you know, eight months and we're playing in front of a crowd, two sold out shows. And it was like, okay, you know, am I up to this task? <laughs> this is there's this a lot is, of stuff that goes through your mind. I, mean, yeah. I did a stream on, on Friday night, like I and I yeah. haven't streamed in quite a while. Yeah. And all of a sudden the concept of endurance, you know, halfway through the stream, like what is that I just felt? Am I, you know, am I <laughs> am I yeah. am I, you know, and you know, you just start questioning things that used to be butter, you know, for you. And um, you know. I, I think I told you, I told my guys in a moment of optimism, all right, you know, we're starting the vaccine process. You know, there's a light. Let's let's work towards the light. You know, here's what I'm doing. I'm going to get my body in shape. I'm going to go back and start, you know, here's the list of songs that we should all be ready to do. You know, the House Rockers A-list. Yep. Um, and, you know, I started working on those and, you know, that that's all good. But, man, a lot of self-doubt, you know, mm -hmm. questions, you know, questions that, you know, what if the band never gets to that gel and vibe that we work so hard to achieve? You know, what if, you know, I, it, it may be a remote possibility. I mean, there's plenty of bands who, who get back together after time apart, but you know, just, just doubt creeps into the mind. Oh, totally. To totally. Yeah. I've, I've, um, for this one, I've mostly focused on uh, like a, a different aspect of it. But, but it's there, right? Like, but I've been thinking about, like, I spent a couple hours here up in the studio yesterday, completely rearranging the room so that it like can fit other people. And there's things that I had set up. I mean, I knew that no one would be coming in here. I knew I wouldn't be playing with other people. And so I repurposed parts of the studio for our recordings and things like that, you know, to have a vocal mic just set up all the time and ready to roll whenever I wanted to. And I was like, oh, I need to like move some crap out of the way, <laughs> make room for other humans to come up here and, and, <laughs> you know, and hang out. And, and this will be the first time that I'm playing live in this room, like making noise in this room since I moved away from having an analog mixer for our rehearsals. I, you know, I moved the podcast to all digital while I also moved the entire studio to all digital. So it'll be logic running our, our monitors, you know, for the rehearsal, which will be interesting. I mean, it, you know, I've tested it. I've, you know, I, I did this months ago, but yesterday I came up here and I turned everything on and made sure it was like going to work. And it wasn't. And I was like, Oh, right. Why, why did I do it that way? This was the wrong way. Okay. You know, and went back through and sort of re-engineered some of it. So I've been, distracting myself with that necessary stuff. I mean, I could pull a mixer out. It's not that big of a deal, but, um, but figured, you know, let's lean in and let's, let's see how it goes. And so, yeah. So, but I'm, I, there has been one thing I haven't told anybody about this. Um, it, the, uh, Russ has a pedal board. Russ wound up, we got together. Gosh, I want to say it was like March 13th or something. I, I'll, I should look at my calendar and see how long it's actually been. But it was like days before the lockdown order was issued here in New Hampshire that the five of us got together here in the room. And even it, when we were here, we were all like, should we have done, like, should we be doing this? Like, you know, there was, it was obvious that, that this yeah. thing was happening. Right. And, uh, and, and so Russ left his amp here that night. And his pedal board and they're still here. He, I guess Mike left his too, but at some point Mike wanted to get his. So I moved it like downstairs so he could come and get it, you know, socially mm -hmm. distanced kind of interaction. But um, Russ has one of these little, it's called a pedal power thing. If I'm reading it from a distance without my glasses, right. And it's, it's just a, a thing that plugs into an AC outlet and then provides power to all of his pedals. So he doesn't have to have the, the individual wall warts and that he had left plugged in. There's a little red light on it. And that has been my red light of hope, Paul, because it's like I have not been able to bring myself to unplug that thing. It's like if that red light's on, it means Fling's coming back here to play someday. <laughs> and so the red light is on and we're we're going to play. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> well, you got to that's the other thing is empathy, you know, be cool to each other, you know, relax and and. You know, you got to start somewhere. So this is the start of something. It's the, awesome, yeah, right? it's the start. It is. And I don't know, you know, when it will make sense to have the other guys in the band join us here. You know, the, the three of us are in a uh, testing bubble. Thanks to our affiliations with the university here, you know, with these classes that we all teach and 
And, you know, the, the ability to have effectively rapid PCR tests is something that yeah. I realize most he, people like, you know, we're, we're the 1% of the 1% here. So we're really fortunate that a, we are able to take advantage of this and B that the three of us are comfortable taking advantage of this because the two don't necessarily go hand in hand. Um, but, but it turns out that, you know, the three of us are, and, uh, uh, at least at the moment, you know, anybody might pull the plug at the last minute and that's okay. It, you know, but, um, but I don't know how the other guys feel. There's, I have encountered a very different mindset with people that aren't getting tested at all versus people that are getting tested regularly. And, and you know, the people that are even people that are testing regularly for their jobs, it, it seems to provide a different perspective on the whole thing that makes it a little easier to have these conversations. Um, and so, so we're lucky that, that at least three fifths of us are able to do it and we'll see what we'll we'll see. start somewhere. Yeah. Well, you got to start somewhere. Exactly. So speaking of starting Paul, there's lots of gear that we have to talk about today. <laughs> I was at C at <laughs> for sitting here at my desk at CES last week. And then Nam is coming this week. And so there's lots of stuff to talk about. I'm sure there will be even more. And I know you have some gear to talk about, so we're definitely going to have a you know gig gear gab uh, segment going on here. The next thing that I want to do though is I want to talk about our sponsor, which is Banzoogle, because Banzoogle is your place to host your home for your band or your you know solo career, whatever it is, on the web. It's an all-in-one platform, right? And it makes it super easy to build your website and your electronic press kit for you and your music. And all the features that you need for a professional website are already built in. You don't have to know how to do this stuff. Honestly, you don't even have to know that this stuff exists because they will show you that it exists, right? So if you want to have your own custom domain name, great. They've got you covered, right? That You start with one of their dozens of fully customizable design templates. So you're not starting from scratch. You get to go through and be like, oh, I, I like the way that looks. That will that vibe will fit for me. And then you take that template and fully customize it, change the imagery, change the colors, whatever you want to do. Then into that, you can integrate the tools to sell your music and your merch, all commission free. In addition, all crowdfunding is commission free. And fan subscription features so that you can like give people stuff if they're the ones helping to, you know, keep your lights on and that sort of thing. Mailing list tools so that you can stay in touch with and grow your fan list. All the social media integrations you need and live support from their musician friendly team seven days a week. Here's the best part about like not, as if none of that matters, but it actually does. Right. The best part is that because you're a Gig Gab podcast listener, you go to bandzoogle.com, you try it for free for up to 30 days. And then you're going to use the promo code GIGGAB, all one word, G-I-G-G-A-B, to get 15% off your first year of any subscription. So Banzoogle.com and then promo code GIGGAB. And our thanks to Banzoogle for doing what they do and sponsoring the show. Great service. I use it. I love it. Awesome. That's that's, that's all the testimony you need right there. Yeah. I mean, it just, <laughs> it's just, it's des it's designed for musicians by musicians and that's you it. can't really, it's a great place to start. So. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah, let me tell you about you a go. couple cool yeah. acquisitions I have. So I think when we did our Christmas wish list show, I was talking about the um, Positive Grip Spark Amp, right? So yes. this little practice amp looks like an amp head, you know, a small lunchbox amp head, but um, driven. There's a lot of stuff built into it, but also so customizable through software. It sits on my desk now. I use it every day. It gets amazing tones at any volume. It actually is is uh, is a forty watt amp. You know, can actually get loud enough for many rehearsal environments. Sure, the array of tones and customizability are awesome. Um, it's an interface, so I actually recorded with it. Um, so it's an audio interface as well, and I am absolutely digging it. I mean, it is amazing price point. You know, the list is two ninety nine. That's the and, part that blows me away, man. Well, I mean, <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. Um, and then there's this huge library of user contributed sounds that you can download and store onto the amp itself. But you know, for a bedroom amp, for a practice amp, for an amp to explore pedal chains and and tonal um, possibilities, it's great for that as well. And again, it's a it's a recording interface also. So, uh, and it's also a, a Bluetooth speaker. I mean, you can. 
you can take it, it comes a little handle, take it with you and you know, you can play music through it. So amazing value. I got it actually. I think I, I think it was, a, they ran a 30% off thing. What? Uh, not 30. That's I got crazy. It for 220. I got it for 229. So. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Gosh, that's so good. crazy, man. That's so awesome. Good. Yeah. Wow. And loving it. And I, and I play through it every day and uh, you know, it's, it's just cool. The other thing that I picked up that is interesting. Yeah. You know, I'll, 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 I'll bounce off of you so that we, so we give people a, a variety of things. Cause I got like four cool. things too. Um, it, from CES, there were the, a couple of sets of earbuds, uh, but the first ones I want to talk about are from a company called new Hera N U H E A R A. And these are their IQ buds Two max or IQ buds squared max. I can't tell from the formatting. Anyway, um, these are earbuds, like no stem, fit entirely in your ear, and active noise cancellation, all of the things you'd expect in a premium set of earbuds. And they are premium priced at $399. Like, there's no question about it. But they've got this ear ID tech built into these that automatically calibrates the buds to your hearing profile. And it's really, they're really built for not just listening to music, although they're built to be good at that. I haven't tested these yet, so th this is not firsthand experience yet, but I, it will be. Uh, and and then, you know, ANC and all of that. But it they are really built to be ANC, uh, adaptive noise cancellation. Sorry, I'm in my I'm in my tech mode and I assume everybody knows all these terms. I, that's that's not fair. Uh, but they use three microphones to analyze and process sounds both inside and outside your ear and figure out how to do all the noise cancellation there. But then on top of that, they have this situational sound thing, which figures out the speech inside the noise and tweaks that for each situation so that you can toggle your earbuds to the most comfortable noise settings for your location. And they really are built to be like those things that are for people that probably don't need a hearing aid, but might need some hearing assistance and maybe aren't comfortable wearing a hearing aid, you know, because there's, there's a lot of stigma that still goes along with that though. Really, you know, hopefully we can erode some of that, but these are earbuds. And so they look like earbuds because they are earbuds, but they provide some of these, they're built to provide some of these features that can sort of enhance your hearing. And I know that, you know, we musicians tend to be one of the groups that suffers from hearing loss. So, so there you go. I, I, you know, they look pretty cool. Hey, I've, I've checked out their, follow, I've checked out their stuff before and have been impressed with it. So I'm, I'm excited. So I know you follow the, the, in the in-ear market and the, actually the headphone market fairly closely. Yeah. Like you, you're one of the more in tune people. You try many of them, you review them both for, you know, Mac geek gab, Mac, Mac geek gab and gig gab. But it seems like um, there's a wave of innovation in in audio listening devices, right? It seems like I, I'm pretty sure I saw there's now like home kits for doing custom mold um, earphones. You don't have to go to audiologists anymore to get that. Yeah. Um, Th I mean, those have like existed for like 10 years, but they're, I haven't tried one of those that actually would be something I would want to use on stage. But I've also seen like um, there there are competitors to the to the better known players now for musician earbuds. Totally, for, you know that is coming way down in price, like yeah. two ninety nine, three ninety nine for stuff that was the six ninety nine to eleven ninety nine price point. Right? That's right. Yeah, there are, and I I I've been I've been reaching out to some of those companies. I want to test some of those so that we can sort of report to you folks about you know, what, how these compare these sort of, you know, I'll call them off brand or maybe better to say not name brand products. But you know, the, the, the good news is the, that part, especially of the audio industry is really tight knit. So if, if someone's doing it, they're probably somebody that knows what they're doing, uh, which is good news. Right. So I, I think, I think there's, there's, um, yeah, there, there's something to be found. Well, the there. price point's held for a really long time. A really long I mean, time, yeah. Yeah, and, you know, it, it was quite expensive to get into the in-ear market. Um, and it still kind of is. I mean... I, 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 but but like I said, they, they're, they're coming down in price for musician performance type yeah. tools. So maybe, I don't know, is are the devices that build the in-ear things, has there been some innovation in those? I mean, are those, are those patented, you know... Uh, 
what makes the, you know, there's, I we, wonder, we've that's had, a good question. I, I wonder if it's an economy of scale, right? If, that's if, what I'm saying. if, well, if it's, if it, if the, if the tech hasn't changed yet, more people are aware of the benefits of, or the existence of, and therefore the benefits of using in-ears is the market simply a little bit bigger now. And so, you, you know, the, the pricing can come down. I don't know. Yeah. People don't have to market it as hard, right? You know, an ultimate ears, think about when Jerry started that company, right? Like he had to go and beat the pavement and hand make every set of these things, right? Like, I mean, you know, it was not an efficient process to right. get that rolling. And the same is true for, you know, Michael at, at Sensophonics and, and, you know, Gail and the, the team at, at Emotic and all, like all of that stuff. Again, the industry is very small. All these people know each other, you know? Right. Um, but, uh, you know, that, that, that level of outreach and marketing and promotion for the existence of the tech doesn't need to happen anymore. Right. Like it's, it's almost ubiquitously known, certainly amongst musicians and probably amongst non-musicians that there are these things called in-ear monitors now. Right. And, and um, of course, future Sonics, um, he's going to yell at me because they, they, that's like the FedEx of the um, of the the monitor the the in ear monitoring world because the, at Future Sonics they coined the term in ear monitors and it was the mm -hmm. a brand name for one of their products and I think like Kleenex and FedEx they've sort of lost that ground uh, I don't know if they've legally yeah. lost that ground but they've certainly effectively lost that ground which is yeah, I mean it's how it works but you know it's not necessary but, you know, the musicians the desire. Yep. Mixers that can provide as almost as many individual mixes as you want are now totally. ubiquitous at the oh. at the prosumer level, right? At the Good at the point. weekend warrior level. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, the, you know, the, all of the playing parts are kind of line up. You know, the, the desire for uh, weekend organizations not to want to carry wedges and you know lug <laughs> any more gear that they have yeah. to. That's yeah. a social construct that, <laughs> that needs to be addressed. So yeah, and and it does seem like there is like. There's opportunity for more. And maybe the guys who are not in that closely held community, maybe some of the outsiders are trying to find their ways into the marketplace oh, as well. That's true. So, yeah. 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 Anyway, I, I find it pretty interesting. No, it's pretty interesting. It's pretty interesting. I, I'm going to, if if it's okay, I, I want to, I have one more set of earbuds to talk about here. And so I'm going to, I'm going to break my own request and, and do. do two in a row because Please these do. blew me away. These are from sound It's the Liberty air Two pro. Soundcore is an anchor company, A-N-K-E-R. If you don't know about anchor, they're a company that, that makes a lot of uh, like chargers and cables and things like that, really high quality stuff. And they spend a lot of time. They kind of remind me of Monoprice in a way where they figure out what you need to do to make something work really well and yet keep the cost low. Their product line is a, a whole lot more focused than what a monoprice does. But, but you know, same sort of vibe I get from them. Super high quality stuff, amazingly aggressive pricing. And so these Liberty Air 2 Pros, they are wireless earbuds in the shape of Apple's AirPods. So they have a little stem coming down. They're 130 bucks. Now, these things have active noise canceling with them. Uh, they've got a, 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 a mixed driver technology. They've got a, a balanced armature for the high end and a driver for the low end, but it's built all as one unit so that you get a clearer, uh, cons more consistent sound, uh, even though you, you've got this hybrid design. And I, these I have tested and they've blown me away. I don't usually like the earbuds with the stems, but Paul, these come with nine different sets of tips uh, so that you can really fit them. And, and this isn't going to come as a surprise to this audience, but know that your ears are likely not matched in their size, right? So it, if you find that a medium tip and, you know, works in one ear, it doesn't mean that a medium tip is going to work in the other one, right? Like your ears are not generally our ears are not symmetrical. You, you specifically yours might be, but I, you know, don't expect them to be. Um, yeah. but, uh, these also have this here, what they call here ID. It's a personalized EQ and it runs you through, uh, they've got an app that you, you know, you download and put on your phone and it runs you through a hearing test and then comes up with this personalized EQ that you can then tweak. And man, these things sound fantastic. 
I, I'm, 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 I'm utterly blown away that for 139 bucks, you get all of this. The case has a Qi charger in it. So you just throw it on your Qi pad or whatever, where you'd throw your, your phone for wireless charging, charges up the case. You get seven hours of playtime out of the earbuds themselves, and then you can recharge them three more times with the case. So, you know, you're getting like whatever, 26, 28 hours of, of playtime. And the call, I've used them for a couple of phone calls. Calls sound fantastic on them. They've got a transparency mode, like all of that stuff for 129 bucks. They're, I'm, I'm, you can tell I'm just blown away that they were able to do this at that price point. So it's fun. Awesome. You know, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's good. They sound good too with music. I'm really impressed. So, all right. My all right, next what's toy that I, yeah. that I picked up was um, an Apogee one. So, you know, Apogee, of course, yeah. is a great interface and, you know, um, uh, preamp, you know, company, among other things. The Apogee One is a two-channel uh, interface. It also has a built-in microphone with with an Apogee, Apogee mic pre in it, so it's really high quality. It mounts on a mic stand. Um, you uh, you know, so I use it. I use the built-in mic, and I just plug my acoustic guitar into into the dongle that they provide. So the dongle is a two-port dongle right okay. so you can either the two ports you can run a, a, an external mic and plug a guitar or something directly into it or you can use the internal but it's only two channels so you can either use the internal mic and one of the two the instrument line in or you can use both of the connections off the dongle yeah. for a, an external mic right um and you know apogee's high quality stuff the software is a little weird um, and it takes a little get, bit of getting used to. It's not the strongest point of it, but the sound quality has been really, really good. And I did, you know, some test recordings last week and I was really happy with it. So another easy way now, you know, and funny, I look around, like I said, the Spark Amp, you know, I can connect in. Yeah. I have that universal audio. You know, I've got a lot of ways to get audio in. Uh, and, you know, you just got to, the way I feel about all this stuff, and it, like I said, I did a stream the other night. I think what I'm trying to search for is the most comfortable way to just sit down, pick up a guitar and start playing and not have to think about the wiring and not have, you know, that, that, that sure. I think is a, that's kind of what I'm searching for is how to get comfortable, even with the streaming. I'll give you, I'll give you a, a quick story. So um, uh, what I have done in, in past streams is I use, um, I use the, camera on my phone, which is the highest quality camera that I have. Yeah, and, sure. Um, and then I was using um, some streaming software on a Mac, the Mimo Live software. Yep. And I was taking audio out of my Bose mixer uh, and, you know, sending it all in and, and uh, you know, it basically gets mixed at the Mimo Live and then out the Mimo Live, it, you know, it goes to, you know, the source. Um, so Mimo Live has had a change. I don't know if it's a result of the latest... Apple operating system or whether it's the M1 issue, but now they don't have a really easy way to connect to Facebook live streams. And, you know, it, it, it takes one extra step that is a little bit huh. kludgy, right? You, I, you know, you have to put the RMS information. That, that's interesting. Cause I, I'm having, well, with Mac geek Gab, we've always streamed using a stream key. So that part, that part hasn't changed for us in recent months. It seems to, in fact, it seems to work pretty flawlessly, but, but we've always used the stream key. We've never tried to like do it by logging into the page or anything like yeah. that. So that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. But it was working. And the, the, that's kind of the point. Got it. I want to focus on the music, not on the technology. Right? Sure. I've, I've got enough to think about between remembering words and, you know, all, all these types of things that, that I, when something changes, it throws me for a loop, but I, you know, I'm, I don't want to go to a deep dive, not knowing what kind of a hornet's nest I'm going to open up. Totally. <laughs> something, something changed with Memo Live and yeah. I, I had loved using Memo Live and I hope to use it again soon, but um, it's not, it doesn't just go to the page that I wanted to stream to anymore. And I didn't want to test stream keys and, and that. Type sure. of thing. Anyway, I, I will say this. this, once you get the stream key like loaded in there, it, for me, I just flip the switch every week and don't think about it. So it cool. like, I, I am back to that, but I know what you're talking right. about. Like you, you got to get there to get comfortable and then you don't want things to change. I got it. Right. Yep. And then, you know, similarly, my universal audio interface doesn't work with a MacBook Air M1, right? Oh. So, so I'm waiting they for haven't get, figured yeah. that out. Yeah. So they haven't shipped that. So that piece of gear is now in, in tech limbo, right? Um, so I decided to listen. I prepared a whole bunch of new music. I'm really focused on the music. I've rehearsed it really hard. I want to stream. I want to play. I want to do this as simply as possible. I don't need to do the 
nice lower thirds. I don't need to do the walk-in music or the walk-in <laughs> graphics. Right. I'm just going to hit go and start streaming, right? Yep. So I did want to do a, a, a sound check. So I set up my phone, set up my Bose mixer, took the audio out of the mixer into the Apple camera connection kit. This has worked for me many times, and it's the simplest and best way to get good quality audio streaming right in. Okay. Well, it sounds wrong, right? It just doesn't sound right. I'm sure. And I tried a couple of things, you know, that I plugged into the wrong port on the Mac. You know, you, why does this not sound right? And uh, Facebook Live, so I was going right into Facebook Live, no intermediary software or anything like that. Sure. Just sitting going to Facebook Live. Um, it was not taking the audio from the Apple camera connection kit. It was still using the... the oh, the, just the Mac's uh, microphone. Oh, the, yeah. The, the iPhone's microphone. Oh, right. Yeah, of course, of course, of course. And the weird yeah. thing was, is then I went to, I tried it with like GarageBand and I tried it with um, a voice recorder and it was all working fine because, you know, the, that's one of the things the phone does. Is it only recognizes one audio source and it, it knows well, if you've plugged in something with an audio source, it yeah, sucks but that it, in. It can use it. Well, so for two things, first of all, I'm shocked that Facebook didn't just work the way that Facebook's app didn't just work the way you would expect it to as an Apple user. It used to. <laughs> uh-huh. um, and uh, I mean, ever try to launch a website in the Facebook app? Does it launch in Safari? No. Stays inside the stupid little Facebook browser, doesn't it? Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, but, but if you were to run a piece of like audio mixing software, not Apple's, but somebody else's, you could choose different audio devices on the, um, on the, on, you know, iOS, on the iPhone and on the iPad. So it doesn't surprise totally me that you. Facebook can see them both. It, well, yep. Then it was bugging me. And then I had to do a little bit of research. Why isn't it? Sure. You know, and there's no, there's no way with, with built in Apple settings that I can select the audio source. Nope. It's supposed to just know. Yep. Right. Yep. And uh, so anyway, it turned out, yes, other people are having this problem with Facebook's app and now we're screwed. So um, what I had to do was audio out of the Bose mixer in right into the MacBook yeah. Pro. Yeah. And just hit go. But then now I'm using a much more lower complex quality camera. Yeah. No, the, the camera on the MacBook Pro sucks. So, you know. It's the, it's the technology that's a bit of a hassle. And, and my point to all this and my point getting back to this Apogee device is, you know, I want it to be as simple as possible. I don't want to have to, you know, th you know, like you and I, when we sit down to do this, you often have to go retrace your signal paths in order to get this podcast. Well, let's, let's not say often, but three times a year, <laughs> four times a year. No, because if it was often, I would fix something else, right? Like I, most of the time, in fact, I sit down and, and, you know, just turn it on and here we go. Right. But there, there are those moments and it's, it's exactly what you're talking about. There's, there's no simple way to do this, especially as you start adding different layers, like video is another layer. And, you know, I, now I want to stream to Facebook and YouTube instead of just recording. OK, and that's another layer. And so much of it is like you were saying with Mimo Live, you know, figure out a path, spend the time. I mean, I've spent I, I mean, I can't even tell you how many hours let's let's, you know, rewind to when we did our first Mac Geek Gab show. I mean, I spent weeks figuring out the tech so that I could sit down and record, but it was weeks of, of researching it. And then of course, like you said, there's the, you know, in the moment, Hey, this thing changed, you know, guess what? You know, I just blew everything up for you. Figure it out again. There, right. there is that stuff, but, but by and large, I think there's no, I don't know of any turnkey solution. I think you're going to need to do what you're doing, which is to create a solution and then, you know, save it in a way that you can just sit down and go. Right. But, but it's, it is this multi-part thing that is just a thing. And I honestly, I think you're going to be better off using your computer than your phone. Um, but you know, you don't have a decent camera built into your computer. Uh, you could like, I don't know, a couple hundred bucks for a Logitech Brio would, yeah. would be the, would be the thing. And I realize we're adding cost and complexity to just do a thing, but that's just sort of, I don't know. It, Maybe I've been doing this too long and I'm, I'm used to it. <laughs> I don't know. Well, and the, yeah. the number of parts in the chain that could change. You totally. Know, is, it the, is it the operating system? Is it the hardware? Is, is it this the, piece of software? Is it that piece yeah. of software? Yep. Oh, no. It, I I have a very, I am still not comfortable. We moved to, to doing video for Mac Geek Gab uh, earlier this year during the pandemic. And I am still not confident enough in the setup 
because I, I mean, the last two weeks have actually been fine, you know, knocking on some kind of wood over there. But, you know, up before that, we had a few weeks where there were just weird issues and each one of them was a different like, oh, well, that piece of software just misbehaved or this piece of software misbehaved. And it's like, oh, my gosh, I've tied together this, you know, house of cards that I teeter myself on for two hours a week, you, yeah. you know, it, and it's not good, right? Like that's, it's, I wish there was this simple little push the button and go, but when you want high quality audio and you want high quality video and you want to deliver it in a way that you want to deliver it to people, suddenly, you know, people like you and me that get a little bit particular about how we deliver things, it takes a little bit of extra tech and a little extra tech. Yeah. yeah. So now I have this Logitech monitor that has this nice 5k you know, camera on it and, Yep. And, uh, oh, that's you know, good. But I didn't want to, I didn't want to schlep all that stuff to, it just felt cumbersome, right? Yeah, I mean, totally. It, just, it felt cumbersome using the Mac instead of the phone. So yep. anyway, you know, comfort and you know, feeling, not feeling heavy, you know, thinking about, you know, oh, there's nine chords going between these two things. And, yeah. you know, is it, yeah. Anyway, that is, that is the musician's plight is to try and just, Emote the music, but you know, but that, I, I the same is true of getting often, on stage, right? Like, well, I mean, the same is true as going into a, a recording studio, right? Uh, even more. How many so. times you go to a recording studio where you sit around and wait for a long, long time to get the drum sound right, uh -huh. right? Or you know, or you know, to you know, get the mix for everybody to feel comfortable enough to record right. So, I guess that's part of the you know the pa the patience in getting that right is part of being a professional, or you know if you're committed to doing it right. I mean, I know plenty of people who literally take their phone to stream. Yep. No, no concern for audio. You know, they just basically, whatever the mic picks up is what it picks up. And, you know, and, and actually many people have no problem with that experience. Right. That's true. You know? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But I, I think there's, I think there's value in making things sound good, right? Well, that's what we do for a living. We're supposed to we, you know, know. We deliver. <laughs> we deliver an audio experience, an oral, a u r a l experience, yeah. right? Yeah, totally, totally. Yeah, no, I, I like I'm. You're preaching to the choir here, <laughs> but it it doesn't just because I I know how to do this stuff, and just because I'm willing to do this stuff, doesn't mean that I always want to in the moments that I have to, right? Like, you yeah. know, tearing apart the studio yesterday. I mean, I kind of enjoyed that, but if I, the next time I have to do it, which will, there will be a next time, right? You know, uh, it's going to be a headache, you know? And even yesterday when I started, it was like, why doesn't this just work? Like it did four months ago, six months ago when I figured it all out. And it's like, oh, cause I really didn't figure it all out six months ago. I, I got it close. Okay. Yeah. You know, it's like, okay, fine. So, and I'm when sure you want to just get that creative thing out of you and then you gotta, you know, you gotta do these seven things. Well, that's but, the know. beauty of this, of like putting together a setup like that. Like, you know, here now in the studio, I can walk in the door because I have everything wired up in a way that I've used before and tweaked over time. You know, I've got everything wired up. I've got everything mic'd up. I've got all the software configured the way that I want. I can walk in the door and within three minutes, I'm recording a track and a good chunk of those three minutes is wiring up my own headphones. Cause I, I don't just put over the ears. I put like in ears in. And so I like snake them down the back of my shirt and like that. That's actually the most time consuming part of the process is getting my mm. headphones on. And I've often yeah. thought I should, I should just have a set of headphones plugged in over the ear headphones plugged in that I can pop on my ears and go if I've got some idea and I don't want to have that distraction of that, you know, little meditation of putting the, the friggin' in-ears in. So, mm. um, I don't know, but like, like it, there is, but if I change one thing, it could mess up that entire process. Right. Like, you know, so it's like this computer, I have not upgraded to the latest Big Sur operating system that Apple has because not because there's anything that I use that's incompatible with it anymore, at least not explicitly, but it's why should I like I always wait on this machine until usually like, you know, they Apple comes out with the OS in September. For me, it's usually May or June when I'm like, yeah, OK, I feel all right. You know, I'll make the jump here. But but if you go into recording studios, there's people running, you know, operating systems on their computers that are eight years old. Sure. Uh, you know, because it works. It's a tool, right? It's not it's not their hobby. It's the tool that they rely on for their work. And so, yeah. 
I don't know. Respect your tools. Speaking of respecting tools, I can talk about what it is that I'm going to talk about with Mackie because the press releases came out this morning and my name is and picture is all over the thing. And Mackie has announced their new Onyx series of mixers. And the reason they have me involved with this is because when we started, well, this podcast and, you know, 10 years before that, when we started Mac Geek Cab, I was using the first gen of their Onyx mixers to get our sound, to do all the things that, you know, we just talked about doing and making it all work. And I loved that thing. In fact, it wasn't until I wound up moving away from it uh, only because it had gotten to the point where it was like, you know, 13 years old uh, and like thinking, do I really want to be relying on a 13 year old mixer as a, you know, the core, the hub of my thing. The Onyx were Firewire mixers. And at the time, you know, 15 years ago, Firewire was way more reliable for audio in and out in a real time scenario uh, with a computer than USB was that at least on the Mac that has actually done a 180 and now USB is the better way to go. Uh, and in fact, these new Onyx mixers are USB mixers. So they're doing it the right way, just like they were doing it the right way, you know, back then. So there was, there were a whole lot of different reasons that I wound up moving away, but it wasn't the sound. In fact, I, I feel I feel like even still I'm chasing the sound that I used to just get from that Onyx mixer. And it's it's I attribute it to two things, these Perkins EQs that they had in there, which were and are because they brought them back in this new version of the, the Onyx really like with the way the sweepable mid works and the way that they, they like tweaked these EQs and created these EQs. It's such a warm, like really easy to get like a musical pleasant sound out of them, especially for voice. And I mean, voice like vocals, sung vocals, as well as, you know, what we're doing here with talking. And then they, their uh, Onyx preamps have 60, 60 DB of headroom. And I never realized how spoiled I was by having that until I moved away from the Onyx mixer. And, you know, I use a PR 40, a, a large diaphragm di dynamic microphone. So it's not condenser. It doesn't have power. It doesn't use phantom power. And I never realized how much gain a microphone like this does. And the sure SM7B is the same way. The RE20, you know, same way. They just need lots of gain. And with that mixer, I never thought about it. I just turned the gain up, gain knob up to wherever I needed it. And it was fine. And I had lots more to go. And then when I tried other interfaces, it was like, how come the thing's pegged all the way to 100, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. um, or I had to get a cloud lifter or a fed head or something, which which does use phantom power to apply more gain to a dynamic microphone. It's an inline thing, um, which then they're they're great devices, but I didn't need one with that Onyx mixer. So I'm really stoked that this thing has come back and uh, obviously really stoked to be part of Mackie's announcement to do it, but uh, more stoked that that these mixers are back. They're good live mixers. You can record right to them or obviously USB to your, you know, whatever software you use and all that stuff. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, they're, it's a good little series of mixers. So I'm, I'm, I'm stoked to have it back because a, they're, they're, it looks like they've, they've done a great thing with this new version, but also, you know, it's like a little bit of reminiscing. It's like, Oh yeah. 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 So anyway, well, it's cool. Got a good guy to they got a good guy to talk about it for it. So, right. Yeah, I know. When they came to me, I was like, oh, that's all. I, 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 now I see. They're like, would you like to speak at NAM? I'm like, I'd love to. And they're like, let us tell you why. I'm like, oh, it's, it's not just because I'm Dave. They're like, sure, it's because you're Dave. Here's what you're going to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Onward. Onward. You got any other toys to talk about? Or are you, uh, you, those were my, those okay. my two new toys for recently. I'm really happy with both of them. They're fun. They're fun. You know, they're, help me get creative and yeah, get things recorded, get new sounds going. So it's, cool. those are pretty cool. And I'm happy with them. My new MacBook, the M one is cool. Um, I mean, you got, we got the same one. How I, are you liking your, your I'm uh, MacBook Air? loving my MacBook air. I am not using it for any audio stuff uh, at the moment. So I'm, I'm, uh, my workflow keeps me immune to any incompatibilities with drivers or anything like that. Um, but or maybe not, but because of that, I'm like, I find this thing amazingly fast. The battery lasts forever. Uh, it, it continues to blow me away day after day. So I'm, yeah, I'm really impressed with what they've done with, yeah. um, with that. Yeah. I, I, how about you? Are you, I mean, I know you've got your yeah. like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it's it, my only issue is my universal audio stuff. Right. It doesn't work quite yet. So as right. soon as that gets solved, I'll be happy, but yeah, you're right. It's fast for all the, 
normal, you know, computery things you do and battery does last a lot longer. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I, it's weird that, uh, you know, what I'm recording on right now is an eight core 2019 iMac. So, you know, top of the line, not iMac pro, but top of the line iMac from whatever, you know, year and a half ago or something. And that MacBook Air at whatever I spent on it, 1200 bucks is by far the fastest computer I have in the house. (laughs) It's also completely silent. I mean, no fan. No fan. I know. Yeah. I can't wait until I see what a not quote unquote low end. I, again, I have trouble calling that MacBook Air low end because it's not. But right. but I can't wait to see the computer that makes that low end definition correct, right? Like an iMac or something with even more uh, because I have to do all kinds of things to manage my fans um, when I'm here, especially recording video for Mac Geek Cab. If I didn't, people would hear my fans on the streams and right. you know, it's crazy. So yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait. Yeah, that's good. Well, um, good job today for the NAM for, for the Onyx folks, for the Mackie folks. Thanks and, man. Um, and never. I'm looking at, I, there's, there's some more stuff coming from, from Plug NAM. the podcast. What's that? Plug the podcast. Will I will. Of course, of course, man. That's what I'm, that's what I'm out there to do. Yeah. <laughs> um, they, they pasty came out with their, they've expanded their signature line of symbols, which I have become more and more enamored with pasty symbols. I, I, when I was young, I got away from them because I, I did not like their 2001 series. I don't know why, but, um, or their 2002, sorry, but I don't, I don't know why I just didn't, I didn't like them and didn't like the way they sound. But then I tried their dimensions which I really loved and I would, I wish they would bring those back, but their signature series has a lot of the same characteristics as those dimensions. Some of them do. And so they've expanded those, which I'm, I'm eager to hear Uh, again. This is where I, one of those times where I wish Nam was in person. um, So I could go actually hear these things, but, um, but that'll have to wait. But um, so I'm, I'm, I was stoked to see that. And then from my Christmas list, Paul, I did wind up buying another Wuhan China symbol, which, uh, which has sounds fantastic. There's so there's such great symbols for what they do. I mean, they're very much that, you know, that you're not going to use them as a, most people aren't going to use them as a ride symbol or a crash symbol or anything like that. But, um, for that China symbol sound, it's, it's just, it's perfect. It's warm and buttery and trashy all at the same time. And like, I don't know. How many symbols do you have in your home studio set up? Right here next to me, I have a pair of hi hats, two crash symbols, a ride, and the china. I don't have a splash set up at the moment here, but I could if I had to. I have like these symbols that are here don't ever have to travel with me. I, and so if I'm going to go do a gig, things here stay exactly the same way that they are. Um, I have enough symbols in my you know arsenal to take others with me when I you know go out and play or whatever. So, sure. Yeah. So, yeah. So I don't know. What's that? Six. If you count high hats as two, five, if you count high hats as one. So, yeah. Hey, we have a project coming out. Our, our Macro All Star Band. Any update on the video deliverable for that? When when, when we're going to see it? We Where? It yeah. Yeah. Wally, who uh, Wally Chawinski, who uh, did has done all of the video coordination for the Macro All Star Band all the way through, um, is working on that. And he's. I haven't seen any of his roughs yet, but. Um, but he says that he's, you know, he's got some ideas and he's putting it all together. So, uh, he seems excited about it. Yeah. 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 I'm looking forward to that. So, all right. We got anything else to talk about, man? Well, just keep on keeping on, man. Keep on keeping on. That's all we, that's what we do, I guess. It's, uh, I don't know. That's it. Better than the alternative. Better than the alternative. Feedback at giggabpodcast.com. What gear have you seen that you're excited about? Let us know. We'll talk about it. Hey, Paul. Hey, Dave. What's that thing we saw? Always be performing. Always.